So in this uh, Duck and I/O modules in Lab tutorial, we will see how we can use the analog output pins on the I/O module. So here you see the pins on the USB 6000X uh, series. So here on the left side you have the analog pins. And here in the bottom you have the analog output pins and then for this uh, for the, uh, this USB 6000 um, and X series typically you have two analog output channels namely analog output 0 and analog output 1 so um, each of those are connected to a ground so basically you have two analog output pins that you can choose between so here you see the hardware setup and uh, testing uh, when I'm going to create this analog output example. So it will be a very basic example where I output or write a value to this analog output uh, channel 0 and then I will connect uh, those, uh, that channel to a multimeter as you see here in this uh, image and then I will uh, then I will uh, should be able to read the same value here on the multimeter that us that I'm writing in the LabVIEW application. So let's go to LabVIEW and create search an application. So now I have opened my LabVIEW environment. Here I have the front panel where I cre create my graphical user interface, and here I have the block diagram where I create the code. But let's start by plugging in. Uh, the I/O module to my computer using the USB cable, and then this pops up. Then you here have different options, and you can choose uh, these options. But typically, I just close it and then search for MAX, and then I will open this measurement and automation explorer just to check that my device has been uh, connected uh, and installed properly on my computer. So. This is the measurement and automation explorer and here under devices and interfaces you will get a list of connected hardware on your computer. So in my case here is my uh, dock device or I/O module and I USB 6008 in, in my case and this got the name uh, DEV2. Typically if you connect several uh, duct devices, they will have the name by default, dev1, dev2, dev3, etc. But you can easily change that name here. You can also click self-test to make sure that the device is installed properly. You can also select test panels and then a test panel window will pop up where you can test the analog input, analog output and the digital I.O. But I just close it. It seems to be okay. So now I go back to LabVIEW and start creating my first application, uh, my first analog output example. So then I just want to create a basic numeric. I can name it analog out, and the unit in this case is uh, voltage. So basically, this is my first user interface. And then we go to the block diagram and now we need to find this uh, DocMX palette. We find it here under measurement I.O. and then NI DocMX and then you can just pin this palette and here you have all the functions that you need to use or can use in your applications. Let's start with the simplest example using the Duck Assistant. Then you just select it and drop it to the block diagram and then a wizard will pop up where you can configure uh, your channel. So in this case it should be an analog output. Then I need to select uh, generate signals and then analog output and then you can select voltage or current. Typically you select voltage and then you will get a list of all the available channels on your DAC device that you are connected to your computer and as mentioned this DAC device has two analog output channels, analog output 0 and analog output 1. I will select analog output 0. Click OK and then it takes some time and then this pops up. Here you can set some settings, uh, the mean and max. Typically just leave the default. Generation mode, one sample on the mine is OK. And then just click OK.
and after a few seconds your duct assistance is ready to use in your application. So the next now is to just connect this numeric uh, control to this duct assistant. So the output of this one goes directly to the data input. And basically, basically that's it. Now you can just run your application and now I have connected my duct uh, device to a multimeter. So I have this configuration set up. I have my duct device here and the analog output pin number zero is connected directly to a multimeter. And then in my numeric control, when I, for instance, write two voltage, I should be able to read two voltage here on my multimeter. So basically, then I can just write or set two here, two voltage, and then click run. And then on my multimeter, I'm now uh, able to read two voltage. Typically, you want to do this in a, a loop. So then I just make or find a while loop, which you find here, while loop, just make a while loop like this. And then typically on your front panel, you need to have a button, a stop button. And then you wire the stop button to the loop condition. This means that the loop stops when you click on the stop button. Also, you typically need to have a timer. Here are lots of timers that you can choose between. The simplest one is this one, wait in number of milliseconds. Then you can type a specific number of milliseconds here, for instance, 1000 milliseconds like this. And then I can run my application. And now my multimeter says 2 voltage when I change to 3. Then my multimeter displays uh, 3 voltage, 4 voltage, etc. Until I click the stop button, then the application stops. So basically, this is a simple analog output example where how you use this uh, DAC assistant. So an alternative to using this uh, DAC assistant, this is simple to use, you just drag it in and then yeah, a wizard pops up and then you configure the DAC device, but you can also do this in a more advanced way in, uh, in your program and then you can use the more uh, low level uh, functions that you find here on the DAC MX uh, palette. And then typically you need to start by selecting here this create task which you find here. Then next you need to create a virtual channel. So I select this one, put it here. Then you need to start that specific task. So I put it there. And then you uh, either need to read or write uh, data in our case since it's an analog output signal that we are going to create. and and watch on our multimeter, I use this white, which I put inside the Y loop. So on the left side here, this is a configuration and in, in is initialization. So you put it outside the Y loop because this should only happen once, while this inside the loop should go into an iteration and read, in our case, every second. And on the outside, when the loop stops and you click the stop button, you need to stop the task, so you put it here. And you also need to clear the task uh, here. So basically, you can now just wire those two, uh, uh, wire these blocks together. So in each, if I click Control H, uh, here in uh, block time, Control H. So then you get, will get this help window. So if I click on a block you will get a specific help for that specific block and then you will see the different input um, inputs and outputs of the, these different functions so then as you see here uh, this create task has a task out and this one needs to be connected to the next block which has a task in so then basically task out goes to task in uh, like this all these uh, blocks or functions like this. And also in the bottom there is an arrow in and arrow out which you also typically want to uh, wire together uh, like this. And then typically also here at the end you also want to have some 
uh, arrow handler so then here you select simple arrow handler because if you get some error here in your code you will this will make sure that the user of the application will get a message uh, regarding this error basically this is um, the same application as using this duck assistant but here i have used a lower level uh, duck functions and also here on this uh, create virtual channels you see it has lots of uh, inputs so also here you can choose minimum value maximum value and you have also other settings that you can set but let's start by just setting uh, Um, the maximum value and the minimum value like this so by default the minimum value is minus 5 but for analog output for these specific duct devices you should set the limit uh, from 0 to 5 voltage typically because negative uh, voltage values are not allowed for this USB 6000 X series Next thing we need to specify here, you see this physical channel, so I select this input, right click, create a constant, and then here I can select the proper channel. So by default, here you have the analog input. So before I, I insert this one, I need to select here, Instead of analog input, I need to select analog output, voltage, uh, like this. The same for this one. Make sure that you have analog, single channel, single sample, and double in this case. And now I can select the physical channel here, right click, create a constant, and now the proper output channels should uh, pop up, namely analog output 0 and analog output 1 and I have connected and used the analog output 0 so I select this one so now we are almost finished the last thing I need to do is to connect this um, numeric control to this uh, right block and then it has an input called data so then I just wire those two together like this and basically this is the application where I have used the low level uh, doc MX functions and now I can run the application and it should work in the same manner as the previous example where I'm using this uh, DACA assistant but now I use the low level functions instead. So then I select 3 voltage here and then on my multimeter I see 3 voltage change to 4, on my multimeter I see 4 voltage etc. So this is how you use the low level DAC MX functions in order to create a basic analog output example in W. So in uh, this tutorial I was showing and exemplifying how to use the analog output pins on the DAC or I.O. modules in uh, LabVIEW. In uh, other uh, tutorials in this series I will show how to use the analog input pins, the digital output pins and the digital input pins. So, so that's all for now, so thank you and goodbye.